Okay, so here's a reaction. Here's the experimental rate law. We want to figure out what the mechanism is. The logical thing to start with is to ask whether this is an elementary reaction. How can we tell if this is an elementary reaction? Because we have the two So does it seem like it, it could be an uh, elementary reaction? Yeah. Yeah. If it was an elementary reaction, what would the mechanism be? That. Yeah, it would be the same. Remember, an elementary reaction is <coughs> when the overall reaction matches the rate. So if this was an elementary reaction, this would also give us the elementary step. And if this were the elementary step, this would be the rate law. All right, however, we might be a little suspicious. There's one thing that would still make us suspicious that this really is an elementary reaction. What's the thing that should make us suspicious? That even though this is consistent with the rate law, maybe this might not be the right mechanism. What makes us suspicious that maybe this is not an elementary step? It's termolecular, which happens, but it's rare. We don't want to assume that unless we've exhausted all the other possibilities. Uh, actually, I should have said, um, if this is the overall reaction, if this was an elementary, element, I forgot how to spell elementary, elementary step, we would actually write it like this, I guess. Or maybe even like this. We were talking earlier about how your textbook uses the convention that when things are reacting with each other in an elementary step, you should write them separately even if they're the same thing. So if I was going to test whether this was the elementary step, I should rewrite it like this. It's already okay to write the overall reaction like this, but we would write the elementary step with these two species separately. Now, if this was the elementary step, it would match our rate law, but we're still suspicious because termolecular reactions happen, but they're rare. It's rare that three things collide in just the right way. So let's continue and see if we can find any other plausible candidates here for what the right reaction might be. So we want to test whether maybe this is a plausible mechanism. How would we go about doing that? What would be a good first step? Make sure that the elementary steps add up to the overall reaction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do they? Mm -hmm. Two NOs on the left matches up. One O2 on the left matches up. This NO3 would cancel this NO3, which is good, because the NO3 didn't appear in the overall reaction. Uh, and the two NO2s match up with this. OK, very good. So um, that matches up with our first step. Notice that you have to be somewhat creative as a scientist to come up with this. You'd have to imagine maybe NO3 is participating here, even though I don't see it in the overall reaction. Um, although that there might be some way to, uh, to test for that or detect it as, or it as the reaction went along, but you usually would not have very much NO3 at any one time because it's constantly being used up as it's made. So there might be some creativity involved in coming up with that. All right, now we know that these match up to the overall reaction. What, what, what would, do we need to do next to test whether this matches this? Right rate laws. Right rate laws, and then what? And then see which one matches so you know that this one's set. That's right. What would be the rate law for the first step? K1 times NO concentration times O2. Good. And what would be the rate law for the second step? K2 times NO times uh, so K2, NO3. NO3. Yeah, times NO. Those would be the rate laws for the elementary steps. Now, if this is the true mechanism and these are their rate laws, what would be the rate law for the overall reaction? And the answer is so far, you don't know. Because so far, we don't know which is the slow step down here. So we need to make an assumption, or basically test. Let's start by testing whether this is the right mechanism and this is the slow step. How do I know it's slow? I don't know that it's slow. I'm testing whether this is the slow step. How can we test whether this really is the slow step for this mechanism? Compared to the experimental rate? Yeah, and how do they compare? They don't. <laughs> yeah, so, what, so if this is the mechanism, is this the slow step? No. Does everyone follow that logic? If this was the right mechanism, and if this were the slow step, this would be the overall rate expression, right? The overall rate expression would come from the slow step, but at the beginning we were told that this was the true experimental, and I don't think they match up, right? Um, they're pretty close, but this has the number two, and this has the number one as the exponent. 
All right, so we've tested and discarded the possibility that this is the slow step. And we basically, we can be pretty confident about that. We've proven that because they don't match up. So we've proven that this is not the slow step. So how do you test whether something is the slow step? You provisionally assume it is and check whether that works. All right, so I wasn't, uh, this assumption was something I was testing. All right, so it turns out this is not the slow step. Does that mean I have to give up on this mechanism? Well, no, maybe this is the right mechanism, but this was the slow step. And that's the new thing we have to learn how to do. So now we're going to test whether this would match up if this was the slow step. Well, if this were the slow step, what would be the overall rate expression? K2, NO3, NO. Now, that doesn't seem to match the experimental data, but we can't be too hasty. And the reason is, this has a problem that makes it difficult to consider because it includes an intermediate. And this rate expression would never include an intermediate anyway. So we haven't given this a fair test yet. We have, to get, we have to get rid of the intermediate here before we can fairly test whether it matches the overall rate expression. That's this technical skill that we need to learn how to handle here. Um, OK, so um, if this was the slow step, this would be the rate expression. But this involves an intermediate. And uh, our experimental data would never have an intermediate. So before we can test this fairly, we need to get rid of this. And let's see how to do that. Well, we're going to have to make uh, another assumption, but we're going to have to make fair assumptions. Um, one thing we're going to assume here is that both the forward and the reverse rates are important for the first step. And in fact, we're going to assume uh, I, I should have said we're going to assume that both the forward reaction and the reverse reaction are important for the first step. Both the forward and the reverse are important. And we're going to assume the first step is in equilibrium. That's kind of what this symbol here means. Oftentimes this is a symbol that's used either for a reaction that could be in equilibrium or sometimes it's used for a reaction that is in equilibrium. And that's what we mean here. This is a reaction that we're assuming is in equilibrium. We're going to assume the first step is in equilibrium. But that's a very fair assumption, because we're assuming that this step is fast. And kind of what fast means is getting to equilibrium fast. So if this step is so fast, it's a pretty fair guess that actually it's going to get to equilibrium pretty fast. So it's not a bad assumption to assume that the first step will be in equilibrium if this step is fast and this step is slow. We already discounted the possibility that this step was slow. So now if it's fast, there's a good chance it's fast enough to get to equilibrium while this step is still moving very slowly along. So this will be our key. We're going to assume that this step is in equilibrium. Now let's see how that helps us. Um, let's write down, um, so we said that this was the rate expression for this uh, reaction here. Rate 1 equals K1, NO, N2. But this was the rate expression for the forward reaction from step 1. This is the rate expression for the forward reaction for step 1. You can see that because it only includes starting materials. It doesn't include any products. That's what we've been doing all the time today. We've only been looking at the forward reactions, and I explained why. Usually we assume that the reverse reactions are negligible when we're doing this, because we're looking at initial rates. We're looking at the very beginning of the experiment, where it doesn't seem like the reverse reaction had time to get going. But now we're assuming that this is going so fast that the reverse reaction here will be important as well. It's going to quickly build up some products and start going into reverse as well. So now we have to write down what the rate expression would be for the reverse reaction for this step. Uh, so let's see. I'll write that here. Rate. Um, equals. So what would be a good expression for the rate x law for the reverse of step one? K times NO3. That is good. What should the exponent be on the NO3? One. Because there's just one of them here. Well put. Yeah, that's well put. Why are we looking at the first one if it's not the slow step? Because we need some help. That's right. Um, let's go back here. Remember I said I needed to get rid of the NO3. That is, I need to get rid of this variable. That is, I need to substitute out this variable. How do we substitute out unwanted variables in algebra by writing down another equation that involves that variable and then substituting that in? So I need help from another equation. 
this equation was not enough. I need to get another equation so I can do the substitution method and get rid of this. Well, the new equation can't come from here because I pretty much used this up. So I, the new equation has to come from step one. So that's why we're looking at step one, even though it's the fast step. So we get more help to get rid of this variable. That, that's a good point. I should have set out that motivation at the start. Uh, before I forget, why are we not looking at the reverse reaction from step two? Because step two, we're assuming, is slow. So it's not going to have a chance for the reverse reaction to start being very important. Usually in these problems, we're not looking at the reverses, only the forward. This is a rare exception where we're assuming this reaction is so fast that it's already gotten to equilibrium where both reactions are important.